Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our live coverage of the latest mission from Vandenberg Space Force Base. I'm Will Robinson Smith, and I'll be providing our commentary for the duration of this coverage. We are broadcasting from the Space Flight Now News Bureau at Massachusetts Kennedy Space Center. Our Stephen Young is busy behind the scenes running the technical operations of our broadcast. And of course, being that this is a Vandenberg based mission, our launch photographers, Adam Bernstein and Michael Kane, are off getting some well earned rest. You're joining us ahead of what is said to be the 10th launch for Vandenberg Space Force Base this year, the 10th launch for SpaceX as well from their West Coast pad, Space Launch Complex 4 East or Slick 4E. SpaceX is currently fueling its Falcon 9 rocket in the aim of launching at 7.28 p.m. Pacific. It is 10.28 p.m. Eastern or 02.28 UTC. Things are progressing well towards the liftoff as SpaceX says that the vehicle is healthy and the weather is 80% favorable for a launch tonight. And I see from a number of folks in our live chat that are in Southern California and around the Vandenberg area that the weather is also pretty good from folks there on the ground. Clear skies. And I see among our moderators in the live chat, Mr. Adam Bernstein is there as well. As he noted, getting some much capital M UCH must much needed rest after putting in some grueling hours down at Starbase in southern Texas. So if he disappears because he goes off to take a nap, I'm not going to blame him. It's good to see you this evening, Adam. And also thank you to one of our other moderators here in the chat, Astro Joe. Appreciate you helping us out here as well as Starting us off with a little bit of generosity, Astro Joe, gifting a Space Flight Now membership. Really appreciate that. And if you are the lucky recipient of that new channel membership, be sure to thank Astro Joe in the live chat. We are powered by channel members here at Space Flight Now. So thanks to folks like Zephyr Wolf, That Opal Guy, I'm Lita, Cindy Edge, Mark Otto, Joshua, Ganine, Calistia Lee, Jonas, Josh King, and many others. Thanks for supporting what we do here at Space Flight Now. Couldn't do it without you. Also, if you'd like to lend some support for what we do here at Space Flight Now, specifically improving our physical infrastructure, our cameras and other live streaming equipment, as also allowing us to bring you good on the ground reporting coverage, as we're going to be doing later this week. You can also use the YouTube Super Chat feature. Not only helps support what we do here at Space Flight Now, but if your comment or question is appropriate to be read on the show, we'd love to include you in the conversation about this or other upcoming missions. We're now T-minus 24 minutes, 23 seconds and counting to lift off of the Starlink 7-16 mission. Batch of 22 Starlink satellites that are heading into the seventh shell of the Starlink constellation. More than 6,000 Starlinks have been launched to date. Well, more than 5,000 remain on orbit today. As we progress towards the launch of the vehicle, and since fueling is already underway, let's go ahead and step through the countdown timeline, let you know the milestones that are past and what is still yet ahead. Fueling process starts with the SpaceX launch director giving their go ahead for the start of prop load. The latest that comes up is T minus 38 minutes. That's the usual time it happens, but if they are in a good configuration, they can give the go ahead a little bit earlier than T minus 38, as was the case this evening. Fueling process starts physically, though, at T minus 35 minutes with a loading of RP-1 or rocket-grade kerosene into both the first and the second stages of the Falcon 9 rocket and liquid oxygen on board the first stage. 
That's followed up at T minus 30 minutes for the loading of cryogenic helium on board the Falcon 9 rocket into the first stage. The helium is used to pressurize the main propellant tanks during flight. That's followed up at T minus 26 minutes with that same process beginning on the second stage of the vehicle. About 30 seconds or so ago, T minus 23 minutes, that's when the loading of second stage kerosene concludes. That's followed by the so-called big vent, a sign that fueling is well underway. It happens as the strong back chill down process begins in preparation for second stage LOX load. T minus 16 minutes, that's when the LOX starts flowing on board the second stage of the Falcon 9 vehicle. A little bit of a gap, then at T minus seven minutes, the engine chill down sequence begins. It's the process of flowing a small amount of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and the turbo pumps, protecting the nine Merlin 1D engines from the risk of thermal shock and damage during the startup sequence. T minus six minutes, the first stage kerosene load is complete. About four and a half minutes out, the strong back retract sequence begins. It starts with the clamp arms underneath the payload fairings opening up and out here at Vandenberg. The transporter erector, or the strong back, reclines about 13 degrees away from the vehicle. It stays in that position until liftoff. Three minutes out, first stage lock slow is complete. That's followed by the two minute mark when the vehicle is fully loaded with 1 million pounds of propellant. Then in the final 60 seconds, control of the countdown is handed over from the ground sequencer to the Falcon 9's onboard flight computers. 45 seconds out, the launch director verifies their go for launch. The engine ignition command is issued at T minus three seconds. Of course, if all nine engines are healthy and ignite, the flight computer will give the command for the hold down clamps to release the vehicle for a liftoff at T zero. Again, that is coming up at 7.28 p.m. Pacific, 10.28 p.m. Eastern, 0228 UTC. In other words, in 20 minutes and 20 seconds. Now T minus 19 minutes, 40 seconds and counting. I acknowledged Astro Joe earlier because I saw his name first, but also want to welcome another one of our great moderators, Astro Jen, for popping in with us this evening. Really appreciate the both of you and the work you do in the live chat. Also to one of our wonderful channel members, Calistia Lee, for gifting 10 Space Flight Now memberships. So thanks to Calistia for that good bit of generosity. Really appreciate that. So I was talking about channel membership earlier. It comes with a number of perks, including discounts at our online shop, shop.spaceflightnow.com, as well as access to 4K views of all of our launches from here in Florida, and also access to member-only videos here on the YouTube channel. So if you're one of our newest channel members, be sure to thank Calistia in the live chat if you haven't already. I also want to thank a few folks for their support this evening. Another channel member, Christopher Jones, with a $2 super chat. Thank you so much, Christopher. Good to see you again this evening. Cynthia Graves with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Cynthia. Cynthia says, thanks from SoCal. And finally, Moni the Horse Girl with a $5 super chat says, can't wait. Love this. Excellent. And while channel membership and YouTube Super Chat are a wonderful way to support what we do, there's another great way to help us out this evening. If you haven't already, it's quick and easy and free to do just by hitting the like button on this video. 
sharing the stream. Also, if you're not a subscriber to Spaceflight now, now's a great time to do so, as we will be heading out west once again for the umpteenth time, it feels like, this year. We're heading back to Texas and, in fact, back to the Johnson Space Center because... Oh, there's lots to talk about when it comes to Boeing's Starliner spacecraft and its first flight with crew on board. The mission known as CFT, the crewed flight test, coming up in early May. But this Thursday and Friday, we'll be down at the Johnson Space Center going through a number of things with Boeing and NASA folks, including checking out the flight simulator getting to talk to the crew themselves, as well as some of the program managers of both NASA's commercial crew program and the Boeing Starliner program more specifically. So looking very much forward to that. And again, your help and support with channel membership and the YouTube Super Chats makes this type of on the ground reporting possible. So a big thank you to all of you who help pitch in where you can. I know times are challenging for all of us these days so the support you offer us in bringing quality journalism not just from here in florida but as much as we can around the rest of the country is very much appreciated and we hope to put that support back into the work that we put out both here on the youtube channel as well as on our website spaceflightnow.com we're now ty 16 minutes 17 seconds and counting and it's a question we get asked all the time, no matter if we've started the live stream or not. So let's go ahead and talk about the trajectory of tonight's mission. Discuss where this bird is going to fly as locks load begins on the second stage. As previously mentioned, the rocket is going to be lifting off from SpaceX's currently only pad that they use for Falcon flights, Slick 4E, Space Launch Complex 4 East. Falcon 9 is going to be launching in a southeasterly trajectory along the coast of Southern California and the western coast of Mexico. First stage booster will be landing on one of SpaceX's three drone ships. The one on the west coast is, of course, of course, I still love you. Falcon 9's second stage will continue on with the Starlink satellites. The fairing halves will be deployed a little bit beyond this map here, where they will be scooped up by a recovery vessel and brought back to port, where they will be examined, refurbished, and turned around for future flights. Previously mentioned, SpaceX is going to be launching 22 Starlink V2 mini satellites on board this mission tonight. These satellites come in at about 1,760 pounds or about 800 kilograms. They have a wingspan of about 100 feet or 30 meters with the solar panels unfurled. Unlike their predecessors that used Krypton hull thrusters, these guys use Argon hull thrusters for in-orbit maneuvers. They were built in Redmond, Washington, near-ish to Seattle. They were deployed at about 180 miles or 290 kilometers above the Earth's surface at a 53-degree inclination. While we don't yet still have a good on-orbit photo of them or rendering of the V2 minis from SpaceX. This is uh, the best photo that we have at the moment from HEO Robotics, snapped last year from one of its satellites, looking at one of these Starlinks on board station, or excuse me, on board, on orbit. I say on board station because part of my brain is still thinking about the next mission for SpaceX coming up later this week, launching a uh, second generation Dragon for the first time to the space station, not from Launch Complex 39A. Oh no, this one is going from Slick 40. As SpaceX has completed its work and certification on 
the crew access tower there at pad 40, as well as certifying the emergency egress system. That new red slide system that we showed you a video on currently up on the YouTube channel here. If you haven't already had a chance to check that out, go ahead and watch it when we wrap up our coverage later today. Or if you want to put this live stream in one tab and open that video and watch it as we still have about 12 and a half minutes, we've got plenty of time to do so. That will be the 30th commercial resupply services mission contract flight for SpaceX heading up to the orbiting outpost. T minus nine minutes, 39 seconds and counting. About two and a half minutes away from the engine chill down sequence beginning. First off, I want to thank the more than 8,700 of you who are watching our live coverage. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button, allow some more folks to find their way in as we are now less than 10 minutes to the planned liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket. I also want to thank a few folks in the live chat for supporting our coverage this evening. One of our channel members, Butterfly, with a $2 super chat. Thank you so much, Butterfly. Butterfly offering a suggestion here, saying that Spaceflight Now needs a West Coast crew. Certainly something that we've discussed in the past. Um, some logistical hurdles, but you know, I think it's something that we are exploring down the road. Um, I know it's something that we would probably like long term I appreciate the super chat and support like that helps us get closer and closer to hopefully making that a reality another channel member Mark Otto who has been a member for 11 months great with upon a year Mark thanks for being with us Mark says thanks Space Light Now for the great coverage of so many launches you are the best we'll really appreciate the kind words and for helping to make us, in your view, the best. Monty the Horse Girl just joined with channel membership at the pad leader level. Really appreciate that, Monty. Thank you so much for joining us. 
Welcome aboard. Gregory Lewis with a $10 super chat. Thank you, Gregory. Really appreciate that. Gregory says, go space light. Yes, indeed. Jason Anderson with a little bit of support here. $1 super chat. Thank you so much, Jason. Marcus Gallegos, another one of our wonderful channel members, gifting five Space Light Now memberships. Thanks for the generosity, Marcus. And if you're one of the new recipients of channel membership, welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us. And if you haven't already, be sure to thank Marcus in the live chat. And our now newest channel member, John Seitz, joining us the channel membership at the Pad Leader level as well. Thank you, John. And thanks as well to Mighty HTV for a $10 super chat. In a simple but brief message of just 10. Thanks, Mighty H. And as we come into the engine chill down sequence portion of the launch preps, let's go ahead and talk about the timeline for this mission once the rocket does leave the pad. The teaser liftoff again, set for 7.28 p.m. Pacific, 10.28 p.m. Eastern, 0228 UTC. So if you are in Southern California and you are not already getting ready to step outside and hopefully catch this, it sounds like there are relatively clear skies. So now would be a good time to go ahead and put your headphones on and maybe pop outside. It's a nice, cool-ish evening. And think of this more as the podcast forum where you can watch ignition and initial liftoff and then look to the skies and see for yourself. At T plus one minute, 12 seconds, the vehicle will pass through max Q, the point of greatest aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. That's followed up by first stage main engine cutoff or MECO at T plus two minutes and 26 seconds. Few events in rapid succession here. Stage separation is three seconds later. It's followed up by the second stage engine ignition or SES-1 at T plus two minutes and 36 seconds. Just after three minutes, the payload fairings will jettison, expose the Starlink satellites to the vacuum of space for the first time on this flight. Then T plus six minutes and four seconds, the first stage entry burn begins. That burn lasting 22 seconds. Falcon 9 first stage slamming on the brakes as it makes its way down towards the drone ship. E plus 7 minutes 55 seconds, the first stage landing burn begins. That sets up a landing on the drone ship. Of course, I still love you. At just about T plus 8 minutes 19 seconds. The Merlin vacuum engine will cease firing at T plus 8 minutes and 38 seconds. Event known as Seco 1. Falcon 9 upper stage will go into a parking orbit or a coast phase until about T plus 53 minutes and 22 seconds. There will be a two second burn that will set up Falcon 9 the Starlink satellite. Are for strong back retract. Deployment at T plus one hour, two minutes and 17 seconds. And as you heard that call out, we are getting some beautiful sunset imagery of a Falcon 9 rocket getting ready to fly in less than five minutes. And again, as you can see with pretty picturesque skies here, just about as good as you can get with a sunset launch. And so if you are farther south of Vandenberg, put your eyes to the skies. It could be a gorgeous sunset launch. And you can see the strong back retract sequence underway. The transporter erector tilts away from the Falcon 9 rocket. Again, this is Vandenberg, so it will recline about 13 degrees away from the vehicle. It stays in that position until liftoff.
now coming up on three minutes before flight. You hear a call out shortly for stage one lock float complete. And there it is. A little less than a minute, we'll hear the same call out for stage two lock load, at which point the Falcon 9 will be fully fueled with one million pounds of propellant. As we come into this final two and a half minutes of the count, we'll come back to the great support in our live chat on the other side of the launch. But to the now more than 20,000 of you who are watching live, first off, thanks for being with us this evening. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button to allow more folks to find our live coverage as we close in on the final two minutes for the flight of Starlink 7-16. Less than two minutes to lift off. Stage two, locks load complete. And with that call again, the Falcon 9 is now fully fueled. You should see some venting. Those are the strong, or the ground, ground gas, gas closeouts. Close yep, that's the venting you see right there. All things fueling proceeding nominally as we come in on the final minute before liftoff. Also, for those of you who are in Southern California watching in real time, the time you see here on the SpaceX countdown at the bottom of your screen, it's about nine is in startup. 11 seconds off from real time. So if you want to make sure to catch it as it flies, your countdown is about T minus 36 seconds and counting. So LD just is go for launch. Subtract 10 seconds and you'll be golden. We're now coming up on 30 seconds before liftoff. T minus 30 seconds. And we'll go ahead and listen to the final few seconds of the SpaceX count. We'll be with you on the other side of liftoff. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition. And lift off of Falcon 9. Go Starlink. Go SpaceX. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Engine chamber pressure is nominal. Power and telemetry are nominal. And a good liftoff, as you saw, of the Falcon 9 rocket on the Starlink 7 16 mission. Falcon Coming up on the supersonic. first minute into flight. Max Q. There's that call out for Max Q. Falcon 9 has passed through the point of greatest aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. We're now less than a minute from Miko or main engine cutoff. And back chill. That call you just heard, they're thermally conditioning the upper stage engine for its burn to begin. Again, we're going to see a number of events in pretty rapid succession. Main engine cutoff 
or Miko, at 2 plus 2 minutes and 26 seconds, thereabouts. That'll be followed a few seconds after that by stage separation. Second stage engine start at T plus 2 minutes, 36 seconds, and then fairing deployment at T plus 3 minutes and 5 seconds. Got a great view of the setting sun over the curve of the Earth there on the left-hand side, just beyond the flame of the Falcon 9 first stage engines. Coming up on Miko. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. All good call outs through Miko stage step. burn of the Merlin vacuum mention. You can see the hypersonic grid fins deploying there on the first stage. Those will help provide steering and stability as this first stage makes its way back down towards the drone ship, of course, I still love you, which is stationed out in the Pacific Ocean. Fairing will... separation confirmed. A little more than three minutes into flight, and unlike most launches, for Starlink, we didn't actually see the payload fairings separate from the upper stage, which is a bit unusual, especially for a Starlink mission. And so far, there have been no onboard camera views of the second stage either, which is also a bit abnormal for SpaceX. Now coming up on the fourth minute in flight. For whatever reason, instead of the normal onboard views we would see of the Merlin vacuum engine during its burn, we're just getting the telemetry map there on the right-hand side of your screen. Unclear if SpaceX will be providing onboard views of the upper stage. And there we go. Now we have some onboard camera views of the second stage. Vehicles appears are on a nominal trajectory. Appears to be a good burn of the Merlin vacuum engine. As you just heard, call out that both the first and second stage are following nominal trajectory. In other words, everything is proceeding on course with both phases of the mission, recovery of the booster and the flight path of the upper stage. You're seeing a little bit of booster shadow there. The sun is glinting off of the grid fins, the Falcon 9 first stage. Those little bursts that you're seeing are the cold gas thrusters, which help provide a little additional steering attitude control on the Falcon 9 first stage. Coming up on six minutes into flight. In just a few seconds, the first stage entry burn will begin. Stage one engine burn startup. You see that entry burn in play here. As the speedometer is rapidly plummeting during this uh, about 22 second burn. Dramatically slowing the vehicle, preparing for the landing burn. Stage one entry burn shut down. That landing burn coming up beginning at about T plus seven minutes and 55 seconds. You should see a touchdown on the drone ship at about T plus eight minutes and 19 seconds. This booster is making its 10th flight tonight. 
Stage one, FDS has saved. Nice little bit of symmetry, given that this is the 10th mission this year from Vandenberg Space Force Base. The vehicles are on a nominal trajectory. And, of course, the 10th flight for SpaceX from California this year as well. Stage two, FTS has ceased. Stage one, transonic. First stage booster now traveling below the speed of sound, coming up on the start of that landing burn. Stage one, landing burn. Near the call out. Internal see guidance. See the burn in play. Drone ship should come into view momentarily. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And for a tenth time. We have a good touchdown and landing of this first stage booster. Tail number B-1075 in the SpaceX fleet. Should hear a call out for Seco-1. Just a moment here. And that call that the upper stage Merlin vacuum engine has ceased firing has gone into a parking orbit. We'll remain coasting as such until T plus 53 minutes, 22 seconds. It'll reignite its engine for a quick two second burn, setting up for a Starlink satellite deployment at T plus one hour, two minutes, and 17 seconds. I go back and thank a couple folks for their support as we were getting into the launch uh, countdown conclusion. And before we get to our closing uh, stats, where they now stand. Our thanks to Big Bear California Live Cam for a $10 super chat. Really appreciate that, Big Bear. Our thanks as well to United Nations Space Command for a $5 super chat. Really appreciate that. <laughs> Wish I'd seen that before we had gotten into the heat of the launch. They were saying, do you think this will be visible from Florida if I stand on my tippy toes? Man, I wish. Marcus Gallegos, channel member with another $10 super chat. Thank you, Marcus. He says, thanks for the coverage. Y'all are amazing. We'll appreciate that, Marcus. Thanks for supporting us in the way you do. And to everyone, he says, also chat. Don't forget, it's always free to like, follow, and share to support this wonderful channel. Really appreciate that as well, Marcus. And to Calistia Lee for a very generous $20 super chat. Thank you, Calistia. He says, stunning launch. This never gets old. Thank you, Will, Mods, and all of Space Light now for providing this amazing coverage. And thanks as well to... Alvinor0293 for a $5 super chat who says, beautiful. Thank you for streaming. And before we let you go on your way and enjoy the rest of your Monday evening, let's go ahead and close out as we always do with a look at the launch stats as they currently stand. Now that we have a successful liftoff and landing of the first stage booster and the second stage is on its way. This was the 10th flight of Falcon 9 Booster 1075 in the SpaceX fleet. This was the 311th Falcon 9 launch to date, the 26th Falcon 9 launch of 2024, 26th SpaceX orbital launch of 2024 as well. Those numbers are going to continue matching until we get our first Falcon Heavy launch, which now sounds like it's coming up in, I believe, early May, 
is the earliest that the Goes U launch is going to go. This was the 103rd SpaceX orbital launch in the last 365, the 70th orbital launch from Slick 4E, and the 138th overall orbital launch from this particular pad. And as mentioned at the top, the 10th orbital launch from Vandenberg in 2024. Moving on to some recovery stats, this was the 86th landing on the drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, the 221st SpaceX drone ship landing, and the 285th Falcon booster landing to date. Finally rounding out with some industry stats, looking at a global view, again, this the 10th launch from California, the 27th orbital launch from U.S. soil, this was the 30th orbital launch from a U.S. rocket company, include the three from Rocket Lab so far this year, down in New Zealand. And this was the 51st orbital launch from around the globe. What does that look like when you go through the numbers? U.S. led by SpaceX, still holding the vast majority of this pie, near, nearly 60% now. China comes in second with 22% of the launch market, with currently one orbital launch failure under its belt with a uh, mishap that occurred during their most recent launch of a long march uh, vehicle. Japan also had a private launch company that also failed to reach orbit on its uh, inaugural flight. Hence the asterisk next to China's 11 and Japan's three. But the year's still very young, and we'll have much more to see from all the players that you see here at the top of your screen, and of course from the U.S. as well. I want to thank a few more folks for popping in some support for the channel on the way out. The condo in Redondo for a very generous $20 super chat. Thank you, the condo. Elliot Schwartz, also with a $20 super chat. Thank you, Elliot, for supporting us on that level. And Elliot says thanks as well. And Gaction, the $20 super chat as well, just keeping that same level, that same energy going. Gaction says, got to see the launch from my house, which is fantastic. It was amazing from start to finish. Looking forward to seeing more of these. Thanks for live streaming. That is why we're here. We are more than happy to do so. And finally, thanks to Hank Roberts for a $20 super chat as well. Thank you so much for the generosity, Hank. And coming in, the buzzer beater, Marcus Gallegos. One more bit of generosity with another Space Flight Now membership. So to our newest channel member, welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us. Be sure to thank Marcus in the live chat before you head out the door, the digital door, that is. And with that, we're going to go ahead and wind things down. Really appreciate all of you for being with us tonight on a Monday evening. I hope you had a wonderful and restful weekend after a very exciting week last week. Three Falcon 9 launches, a Starship launch. Now coming into this week, we've already got our first Falcon flight under our belts, and we are in the prep work for a Dragon flight, a cargo Dragon. Again, this will be the first time a second-generation Dragon spacecraft launches to the International Space Station from Slick 40. And of course, we will have live launch coverage of that mission coming up on Thursday afternoon. That liftoff is set for 4.55 p.m. Eastern, so be sure to come right on back if you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe to Space Flight Now and click the bell icon turn on all notifications so they get alerted whenever we start these live streams and you don't get left in the lurch. I want to thank our now newest channel member, Robert O'Brien, for joining us with channel membership at the pad leader level. Thank you so much, Robert. Also want to be sure to thank our wonderful moderators who have been helping to run the live chat this late afternoon slash evening. I see Stephanie B. join the party along with our two Astros. So thanks to all of you for 
helping out this evening. Really appreciate you being with us and doing all you do to keep the live chat kosher for everyone to have a good, robust conversation. Our thanks to our editor, Stephen Young, for running the technical operations of the show behind the scenes. And our thanks to the fellas behind the cameras, Michael Kane and Adam Bernstein, for all the work they do for our Cape-based launches. And a special kudos to Adam for hustling and moving for all the work he did last week down at Starbase in Texas. Most importantly, thanks to you for spending part of your evening with us for some live launch coverage. Again, we'll be back in action next for the Starship, or the Starship, still thinking about that, for the CRS-30 mission from a Slick 40. And again, we'll have Starliner coverage at the back end of the week as well as I'll be down in Houston at the Johnson Space Center doing some work there. Talking to folks about the first crewed flight of Boeing Starliner spacecraft. And of course, SpaceX plans to launch, they say, between six and nine additional starships this year. So we shall see. We may be making a lot more trips down to Boca Chica in 2024. So buckle up. It's going to be one of those years. So thanks to uh, Arc JCM travel videos for hitting at the true buzzer beater with a $20 super chat. Really appreciate supporting us at that level. Arc JCM, who says, excellent coverage. Thanks for doing these. I think that's the last one. I don't want to make, leave anyone out here. Just double checking, making sure. All right. So that's going to do it for us this evening. Again, thanks for spending some time with us. For all of us here at Space Flight Now, be good to yourselves, be good to others, and we will see you next time. Good night.